Every time wrong button. How do how do how do clearance level? <laughs> I want to clearance level. The disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. All right. I like that. That's a, that's a fun way of conveying the narrative. It's different. Communications. We're on the right track. It reminds me of how they did it in Alan Wake, but like not as bad, because the way they handled it in Alan Wake was pretty not good. Okay, we gotta we gotta examine around. Trench dead letters approval. Greetings, Director Trench. I'd like to thank you for approving my request for the Dead Letters Archive, cataloging the Bureau's collection. Of delinquent mail will provide an extremely handy database that research teams can use to search for any connections or related topics found among the letters. Aside from the more functional purpose, the archive will allow us to preserve these windows into authentic human encounters with the paranatural world. The letters came to us from various places and times gathered by the Postal Service as undeliverable. The Bureau is the perfect home for them. I realize not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranatural events. But even the erroneous ones allow us insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. Of course, I will first complete, not complete, first compile a system to allow us to analyze the letters for our information or suspected connections to Oz and other altered materials. So thank you again. Can't wait to delve into my dead letters. I'm betting that you are dead now. So there is like a dash function to the character and it's the worst controlling dash that I've ever experienced. And that it just kind of stops whenever it wants to. But I don't know if there's any way to fix that in any capacity. So I'm just kind of left suffering with it. And I really hope that it just doesn't come up as a, a frequent necessity. Dead presidents! To whom it may concern, I am being contacted by the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. People are telling me I'm imagining it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. Why would he know anything about lawnmowers? Hmm. I have great dead men telling me about the past and present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. Ah, uh, that's a glass one. Alright. I see a television. Are we in for another treat? Book Club Penny. Hello, avid readers. The Bureau Book Bunch will convene at the usual spot in the corner table the cafeteria at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Currently discussing Unless You by J.D. Brooks. Everyone should get their reviews to me by Monday. 
before lunch, so I can generate some conversation starters before the meeting. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Sure, that all was completely normal, and not anything strange happened at all. That is just an, a normal children's show. What, what could possibly be wrong with that? God, I would love if she could actually just fucking haul ass and sprint properly. Like, she just decides to stop sometimes. Also, I, I'm loving the fact that the map just decides not to work sometimes. I can't tell if it's a legitimate reason or if it just isn't loading. So that makes it even better. Okay, well I guess we go towards the blood, right? All right. Hey, that's not cool. I love it when the walls scream at me. An object of power. The hiss of okay. Okay. Hey, there's the frame rate issues. You're telling me how to crouch now? You're telling me there was a crouch the whole time? Oh my god. Don't worry, everything's fine. What could go wrong from here? Shatter Recoil Efficiency Weapon Mod. I don't know what that means. Please haul ass. Please haul ass. I'm holding the button to make you haul ass and you're not hauling ass. That is a room you cannot enter. Okay, finally hauling some ass. A moderate amount of ass. Okay, I don't like this. I don't think this is very cool. Well, apparently a gun is not a solution to every problem. Oh, foreshadowing. Thank <laughs> you. 
The floppy disk slash nuke can be bound to gain launch slash telekinesis, but I was already using telekinesis. It's harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. They're pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. Why would you not want to be? But fair enough, I suppose. That's a gun. Yo! Okay, hello. Wait, can you then use the debris again? Yo! Yo! And then the- oh my god, this is- this is too much. Okay, it breaks down after a certain point to like, where it cannot be used anymore. The body glove really adds something to the aesthetic also that's pretty cool. I mean, I love outfits like this just for the weirdness of them. Into the hole slash slot. It's that Assassin's Creed level, sure. Whatever. Uh... Sure. Wasn't there just a lot of areas in Assassin's Creed that were just white space? Isn't that just the default nature of the Animus? Yo, okay. Yo! You can pick them up through enemies and, and make them die that way. Okay, this makes combat a lot nicer. The idea that you basically never actually run out of a form of ammo. Because you have this. The hiss slash noise is burrowing into our astral plane slash secret base. You must stop slash mute them. The floppy disk is now bound slash delivered. The hiss slash antagonist is seeking our astral plane. There you are. You were gone. Cut off. I got it. Oh, uh, that's some big anger boys coming in from down there. Oh, I can't even equip that. With semi-automatic fire. I don't even have that yet. Case files. Containment procedure must be contained in a cell with no other loose materials. The object is an 8-inch diskette containing Soviet-era nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para-utilitarians to telekinetically lift materials and throw them in a short... Wait, throw it in a short distance. That's still not what that says, but I just am too tired to care. Uh, see Dr. Darling presentation 1115 for more information. The object is currently bound to blank for research purposes. Stolen from a Soviet military base located in blank by agents blank and blank with the CIA. The diskette contained launch codes to blank missiles believed to be reserved for use against blank. After being, retu being returned to America, the diskette began throwing computational hardware at members of the decoding team. An informant in the CIA took the bureau off and was requisitioned by agents the next day. Just like you wanted, right? This will help. Oh, I did not expect that to be explosive, but sure. Okay, well, all last time. Yo, so many potential. Yo, fuck off. Hey, I don't like that you guys can shoot me through that. That's not nice. Oh, 
Oh, fuck off, dude. You know what? It's always a good day when you can kill somebody with a cardboard box. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, we can't have that existing. That was a rocket launcher. Yo, what? Get out of here. Jeez, don't like that. Okay, cool. But that is a sturdy trash dumpster. Wait, are you kidding me that he just was perfectly resistant because he wore a helmet? Nah, you, you're getting out of here. I'm done with that shit. Book Club, Samson. Oh my god, I didn't expect that much just to be on a book club. So I don't usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this was all right. The title, unless you could refer to a bunch of things in the book, I guess. But I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around, almost like a catchphrase, got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and guns, space hippies, and a badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on Sunday, I know who I'm picking. The scene where they invade city planet and convert the entire population using those brain worms, that space dogfight between those two ace pilots, sign me the fuck up. What kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story by getting battery cylinder launched into his face by a gravity anom uh, gravitational anomaly. His death didn't feel necessary at all. Man, don't you just love when your favorite characters die in things? His demolition experts. His ranger. I'm not gonna- I don't think I'm gonna read these that often. They're just guy that shoot thing. Unless there's some, like, really interesting info in there. Headshot boost. Okay. I kinda dig that. I kinda dig that. Oh, this is just gone now. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. Wow, I hate that sound. Ooh, that was some slowdown again. Is this not a mail room? There's memory. Fair enough. God, I'm 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 certain this is a mail room. Well, okay, apparently it's that room. Fuck what looks like a mail room. This is not enough of a mail room. It has to be this mail room. Specifically, this other one. Can't use the elevator, I'm assuming. No, you cannot. Is there no... No item to pick up in these areas? Really? All these documents and not... Oh, I was gonna say, come on, you can't do this to me. Re-information campaign on summary of Willow Awe. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack on the Alaskan town. 
You all know I don't like to boast, but claiming that the family was killed by migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystem was being ruined by global warming was a stroke of genius. Using current ecological concerns makes the public much less likely to blank. So another awe behind us, and the public is none the wiser. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. That doesn't mean we can stop monitoring blank and blank for any off-message opinions. But it looks like we're in the clear. Damasio. Welcome to the comms department. We are here to help. This is unusually clear being screamed over the microphone right now. Okay. I'm not a fan of this. Think there's any paranormal anime in here? There was uh, one SCP that got made into an anime so that way people would masturbate to her. Like, I'm not even really making that one up. Like, that's an exaggeration. Uh, but essentially there was like a captive goddess in the SCP's uh, control. And they wanted to test out how, how she worked, basically. And what fed her as praise. And so they made an anime about her. And then just basically made her into like a waifu character for a bunch of people. And once she got waifuized, it was like reinvigorating her. So I guarantee you there's at least one paranatural anime in this universe. Like, they, they've, they've established that they basically make television shows to cover up stuff and to like affect change so I guarantee you that they they have made a television show that is an anime oh this one's just a freebie sure oh Hey! Clearance level one! Door. Okay. Oh, that's a boss arena if I've ever seen one. We're gonna take a minute. That's not exactly a great sound. It wasn't what I was expecting out of a radio. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? Yo! Ooh, the slowdown, the slowdown, the slowdown, the slowdown. Okay, that's really good. You can just grab tiles out of the floor. Big ends of that. You're listening to America Overnight. Mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently <laughs> while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Now, this is something I experienced myself. I, 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 I tell you what. 
night manager and avid listener of the program God. insisted I take ah. this particular room. Now, I was told to take this room. I'm doing that as bad as possible. The body of the man was discovered under the bed. Inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when the housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. <laughs> it was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something we can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. That was just an actual, like, instance of somebody telling an urban legend. Clearance level one? I was gonna say, like, didn't I already get that? But I guess that that's just an alternate thing. There's your recovery speed increase. I don't need that yet, but thank you. Whoop, wrong click. Okay, weird. Are they like specific? Like you only get one use? Was that a second one? I'm a bit confused now. How the clearance shit works. I. Okay, I guess. Gee, I, I'm very pleased to see space warping in front of me just immediately. Lockdown distinctions. Pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered vents. The lock one or all of the sectors by restricting the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. This can only be lifted by the direct... Uh, directorial override in maintenance once the director is satisfied the situation is under control external lockdowns are a bigger deal nothing in or out of the whole building it's only triggered by code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research slap together it can only be lifted once a the threat has been neutralized b high clearance individual gives the system the all clear this process is not the same as directorial override so stop saying it is in the documentation basically you idiot um i know it's confusing as hell i've told darling a hundred times to change it but they're adamant that it stays the way it is honestly i don't think they even know how to change it at this point let's just make sure our staff understand how this mess all works it's nailing down my favorite part about the SCP universe, which is just the bureaucratic incompetence of the people in charge. Okay, so it's not poison immediately? Oh, that is, though. Nope. Okay, so I have no idea how to deal with that.
sure. Okay, this, uh, this has been very productive. I'm glad to have spent my